Today, if I were still have to choose, I would still have become a barrister. Perfect junior barristers. <laughs> there are quite a few in my chambers. I If you did not become a lawyer in the 80s, what would you do instead? If I didn't become a lawyer in the 1980s, I think two other possibilities that I can imagine myself getting into. And one is I would probably have gone into research in literary things. And I was very much interested in literature and music. So I would have gone down one of the two paths. I could have become a, a musician, possibly a performer. and. I would have been interested in researching into music history and, and literary history and very much into language. But as the circumstances didn't really permit me to take up other choices, I was almost sort of cornered into pursuing a profession. And the most likely profession uh, for myself was law because I was not good at math. So by elimination, I, I became a lawyer. Because I, I have certain qualities about myself that I knew could be put to good use in law. For example, I was good at standing up and speaking and I was doing a lot of standing up and singing in those days. So I was not afraid of speaking to the public and I was not afraid of standing up and making my voice heard. Now even to this day I think uh, that is a very valuable quality as an advocate because as an advocate you have to make people want to hear you and uh, want to listen to what you have to say and uh, the, the way you use your voice, the way you use your body language are all very important qualities for making this successful. So those are the careers I would have gone down on and, and the path that I would have taken would have been very very different. If you are a law graduate today, again, what would you do? It's quite right that I'm, I'm a contrarian a lot of times. In those days, I chose the path of a barrister because I was a contrarian. I think over 90% of those in my class ended up being solicitors, and I was the, one of the very few who chose the bar. Today, if I were still have to choose, I would still have become a barrister. I mean, if I were a law student graduating, I think this has to do not with the times, not with the economic environment, but it has a lot to do with what I see myself as. I think I would excel more as an advocate than I would as a solicitor. Some law graduates today won't be offered with jobs. Any suggestions to them? I think everybody in the legal profession can see that coming and when we talk amongst ourselves we have been sort of talking about how law graduates might at this moment find it difficult or find it worrying because uh, you may not already have a job offer but uh, I think it is very important to to know that this will pass and this is a very good opportunity for yourself because when we graduated you have no choice because you know everybody is going out to work and uh, if you don't then then people will ask you know what, what are you doing were you not offered a job because most people would have found a job quite easily in those days. So if you decide not to immediately go into the profession, you have to have very good reasons. But now the circumstances are such that you may not find it good to go into work at once. For example, if you are given a contract but the contract is, is not very attractive and not something you like to do, or you just don't find it desirable, I mean, it, it is still open to you to spend this interim period of time usefully. Now, for myself, at this point of time, because everybody's forced to work from home, it is not as if uh, there has been uh, a downturn in volume of work but because of this relatively relaxed attitude and nobody is sort of hounding you at your back every moment uh, asking for work that you're supposed to have finished doing and wanting dates from your diary to go for marking in order to fix court hearings I find that there is a bit of space for me to actually go into areas that I was always interested in or have wa always wanted to spend time on like writing up articles which I have always wanted to, to do and not have had the time now for graduates uh, the same thing applies to you actually because it will give you a window of time that you can usefully use to pursue things which you would believe would actually make yourself even more competitive when the time comes for jobs to flow back in again so i think it is a very very good time you should look at it very positively uh, if you'd like to study a particular area of the law or get a diploma or a master's degree this will be an excellent time for you to do that if you wouldn't like to go at, formally go back to school it is a time for doing research uh, into the area you might be interested in. I think one other aspect is that you may consider that this is a kind of personal opportunity for you to mature in a slightly different way. Now um, abroad, particularly in America and in England, many children would actually take a gap year 
before going to university. It is not so popular in Hong Kong, but this is a period of time that the high school graduate is, is expected to actually mature in a very significant way before they go into university. Now, if that opportunity was not available to you, this would be a good time because when the as soon as the pandemic eases, you can decide to travel, uh, not to travel in a luxurious way, but actually to travel not in the same way as you would go to Phuket for five days or something like that, but actually to mature to go out to see the world and see how other people live, to see how things are operated in other countries where you might be interested in understanding more deeply. Uh, the third option is actually to go into a different area of work, either by way of internship or even semi-voluntary work, in order to gain more experience in life as a whole. Because as uh, lawyers, the more senior lawyers who are responsible for hiring, we always find that graduates with background outside the law, they actually almost always appear to come across as being more mature and being more adept to different things. Because I remember the time when I was a graduate, I, I, I didn't have any understanding on most of the things that I read law about. For example, banking law. I, I had no idea how international sales operated. And I mean, you read about it in the textbooks, uh, or this is the document you, you need to get. And then so somehow, you know, dishonesty might happen here and there. And therefore the law will have to step in to try to resolve disputes and so on. And I have very, I had very little understanding of how these things would actually happen in commercial world and why they happen in such a way. And I think an opportunity to go outside the law and to gain some sort of working experience would be very valuable. Now, you might think that, well, I mean, that's very well to say that, but how do I actually find anyone who would uh, hire a law graduate to do things which are not law? I think law graduates are better placed than anyone who is really in general studies. So there is no reason why people wouldn't be prepared to consider a law graduate if they are looking for someone to do a job which can be performed with some training. So I think the law degree is particularly valuable in this sense because I do see that particularly in recent years, a lot of law graduates have gone into things other than the law, such as in the investment area, private equity, investment banking, or even into education. So, I mean, these are opportunities which uh, you should not consider as not being open to yourself. So if you are not immediately going into a training position or pupillage, it is important to keep a positive attitude and be prepared to take up opportunities which will give you a learning opportunity. Any kind of work that gives you a learning opportunity and regardless of whether it is actually legal or other non-legal jobs. And if you're interested in academics, then I would strongly advise you to study and become even more qualified and be ready when you need to be even more competitive than your peers. Can you describe a perfect junior barrister, from ability to manner? Perfect junior barristers. <laughs> there are quite a few in my chambers. I would say the qualities that most senior would look for are these. One is diligence, industriousness. That's the most important thing. I mean, nobody wants lazy junior barristers. Secondly, is somebody who is sensible. Now, why do we need them to be sensible when, when the senior isn't right in the driving seat? Because we don't really have a lot of time to waste. So we don't want a piece of work done, uh, which is wasted. It means time wasted. And then you have to have it done again. I'll have to do it myself. So sensible, but that's really a given. And then thirdly, humility. It's very important to know where you stand when you're a junior. And humility doesn't mean that you have to take nonsense from people. Hopefully our senior counsel don't give people nonsense, but it means that you, you have this quiet confidence about yourself, that uh, you don't feel conceited and you don't behave in a conceited way, because that doesn't only turn off your leader, but it also would turn off solicitors who instruct you. And that, that is even more harmful, of course. And then the best of the junior barristers that I have worked with are those who anticipate what is needed to be done in the case for me or for the case in itself. And that I find to be a kind of extra quality that would make a particularly good junior barrister. For the best junior barristers, you don't need to ask him to do, oh, please do a table on this or do a next, please look into this point and next, please now do a schedule of this evidence or whatever. But you don't need to ask because he was already stepping into your shoes and thinking in the same way as you are. And he will think, oh, what if I were actually conducting the trial and I would need to prepare for cross-examination, what would help me? And then he would already have proceeded to do it without you having to ask him because that will actually make me feel that I can spare the rest of my processing capacity on other things that I need to take care of. For example, how to present the arguments and the law and so on. When I work with as a team with junior barristers, those are the qualities that, that I treasure very much. But and another extra quality 
personality is, of course, a pleasant personality, somebody who has a sensitivity as to how others feel and what not to say something at times and what to say at other times. So this kind of sensitivity is actually a quality to personal success of the junior barrister. And that is bound to make that person very easy and very pleasant to work with. And when we have a ch have the choice of picking who to work with, those are the qualities that, uh, that we would be looking for. But the ultimate failure is, is to lose the trust of the client. And I think the solicitor loses his trust with the client by picking the wrong barrister. So the big fail of a solicitor is in identifying the best person for the job. The solicitor role is very important. 